I'm on the Trump stand at TCT. This is all about 3D printing and additive manufacturing. You'll know Trump uh, like me for their fabrication machinery, laser cutting technology, uh, a huge company for that, now embarking on 3D printing. Um, but actually, didn't you have a machine back in 2005, I was told, or 2003? We did, we did. In 2003, 2004, Trump was producing powder bed machines, uh, and then they maybe produce a couple of dozen machines. Uh, they're still in production, many of them, and to, then they decided uh, at group level that they was going to stop producing them machines because the market wasn't ready for that technology at that time. So we carried on with LMD and stopped with our powder bed. But it is ready now, and that's what we've got here. I, I, what I want to ask you here, Tom, is I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a novice. I'm a metal cutter by heart, okay? So I'm, I'm not, a, not a metal printer. When I look at this machine, this True Print 1000, the first thing I think is the part is not growing. What, what's happening? What's the process? The process is we have three chambers, uh, what we see on the screen. We've got chamber one where the powder begins, chamber two is with the build chamber, and then chamber three is the overflow. So the powder starts in uh, the first chamber, and uh, layer by layer, we're welding the part in the second chamber. So every time we see the wiper go across, we uh, are actually reducing the uh, chamber uh, in the middle, and the part is going deeper into this chamber. So we're slowly changing over the powder from one to the other. So the, the, the powder's being layered and yeah. then it's being lasered. What's the, what's the height or the depth per, um, per, per pass? The, the layer uh, thickness is, is, is adjustable and it actually depends on the quality of the part. The, higher, the thinner the layer, it, the higher quality of the part, so, but the slower the production rate. So it's a little bit depending on how you want your part to turn out, higher quality, lower production rate, or higher production rate, lower quality. However, typically we see 20 micron as the, uh, as the layer width thickness. What's the quality? Tell me about the quality. What quality can you achieve with this? Is that about tolerance? Is that about surface finish? Yeah, surface finish uh, the, the, the would normally be a secondary process after the part has come out of the machine. So the surface finish is, is, is quite good, but we go through uh, a bead blasting process normally where then uh, the surf to release the loose powder, etc. Okay, what, what's the material that we're actually printing here and what's the limits on the materials? What's the options on the materials we can, uh, we can use? Uh, the material printing here is stainless steel 316. There is options for many different types of materials. For the trunk machine, the parameters are completely open. So actually there is no limitation to materials. It's just about providing the parameters so you're able to weld the materials. But trump are supplying parameters if, if that's required. And typically the material types we see is titanium, inconels, stainlesses, aluminiums. These are already been proven on our system. But like I said, the system's completely open. So any material can be possible. Your software and hardware totally trump. Yes, absolutely. The uh, machine is using Trump laser, so it's our laser. It's a Trump machine. Uh, the software we are in working with Siemens NX. We call it True Trump Print. The foundations is Siemens NX, but also we offer post processes for different softwares too. Great stuff. Okay, so this is the True Print 1000. Let's go and uh, excite our viewers with the, the next machine because this one's. Uh, this is the one I've been told that really is attracting a lot of attention this week. So the 3000, the 3000 model, is this is a lot of the technology we've just spoken about in the 1000 applying to this machine as well? Yes, the 3000 is, the biggest selling point for the 3000 is the removable build cylinders. Uh, so we see a possibility to improve production rates of our machines by having the depacking and the preparing done outside the machine. So on the 1000, we still do the uh, preparing and the depacking inside the machine. But when we're doing that, of course, the downtime, uh, the machine isn't producing. So we've got potential time there we could, uh, we could use if we could somehow separate that from the machine. So on this machine, it's a full production machine. It's uh, more designed to be producing high quantity of parts so therefore we take the build chamber once the parts been complete and let's just move back towards this because this is this is the build chamber here isn't it this one yes exactly this this is the build chamber this can be removed from the machine so we take this from the machine we take it over to our depacking station uh, using a, a, a fork truck of course and then the depacking is done in the depacking station which means then we can set the machine up and get it running on the next job whilst we do the depacking at the same time I challenged one of your um, one of your colleagues about the speed of these machines and when in in the metal cutting sector it's very much about you know getting that higher spindle speed getting those higher rapid speeds etc 
acceleration means the part comes off quicker. Yep. There's a limit to what you can do with 3D printing and the speed that you can print. So what I'm told you're trying to do is find the other areas to reduce the downtime. Is, is, it, would that be a good, um, correct sort of sentence to say? Uh, that's exactly right. And that's why we're looking at areas of how, how we can depack separately. How can we squeeze as much, much uh, production out of the machine as possible? Uh, and that's why we believe depacking can be done uh, separately. And can you just add more lasers, though? Can you just add another laser, second laser, third laser, then you'd make more parts, a bit like a you know, a, a multi-pallet scenario or a multi-part, multi-spindle type machine. Absolutely. Uh, the TruePrint 5000 due out next year will have up to three lasers, one, two or three lasers, and then we get the benefit of the exchangeable cylinders and also the faster production rates with a multi-laser. Okay, let's just walk to, to the area here that we spoke about just to c conclude this. So this is wh where you would then, um, yeah, just tell, well, tell us exactly, just, just reiterate what you said here in this area. Yeah, this is the depacking station. So the build cylinder that we just saw a moment ago will be brought over to the system. We load it into the bottom of the, uh, the, the depacking station here. Uh, we have some pedals at the bottom where we're able to lift up or drop down the build cylinder inside here. Uh, inside we can see the pipe work, which is the vacuum. We use the vacuum to take away the powder, uh, the excess powder from the part, and then we reveal the part in, in, in the machine. The, the powder then is gone to a, a, a separate sieving station so we can store the powder, we can uh, prepare already the next cylinder for the next job on the machine and yeah everything's done on, on this side. Are Trump kind of a leader in this area? You know I'm seeing a lot of technology here, is this, is this something that you're really stamping your mark when it comes to additive manufacturing beyond what you're also well known for? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, a Trump the market leaders today, I, I, I'm not so sure, but definitely the uh, goal is, is to be exactly that.